This video is sponsored by Wondrium. Hey guys, here's my pet cat, cat, and he's gonna die soon. Eight years ago, we found him outside of a cafe Rio, and since then, he's been contributing absolutely nothing to the family. And pets have been a staple of humanity since basically ever. And they've definitely gone through some evolutions during this time. The earliest pets we had were mainly like dogs, cats, and fish. But they've all gone through changes to fit our needs the best. Like early wolves were nice for free food, which got us all sorts of variants of dogs. Then cats kind of just showed up in our houses because of all the free food squirming around. And we were kind of just like, oh, all right, so we got some bonus colors as a reward for feeding them for all this time. And we looked into the water and said, hey, that's neat, and put them in our yards and stuff to get some cool combos. These are all cool and stuff, but they all have one flaw. They all die. <laughs> There's no avoiding the facts, but I'm gonna do my best to keep cat alive as long as possible. Now, like I said, we've all gone through changes to fit our needs the best. And if you've taken a look at society today, there's been some changes. <laughs> At this point, pets aren't just for catching mice or defending us. It's just to have a good time in whatever way you like. For cat, that means being a moving house decoration. But decorations aren't enough anymore. Everybody's focusing on technology. Regular old pets can't keep up with the constant stimulation and entertainment of TV and music. And they're such high maintenance. Like, come on, I'm giving you food, good health, and plenty of attention. The least you can do is have a built-in clock. 1996, Bandai released the Tamagotchi, the first mainstream virtual pet to hit the market. You would feed it, take care of its business, play games, or just be a clock. But this wasn't the original virtual pet around. This started with PF Magic's dogs just a year earlier. And it had the idea of feeding and playing with your pets. It even upgraded the next year to include cats, thus forming the Pets series. Pets. This whole virtual idea is really onto something. That way we can avoid our problem altogether. So this is the start of the digitalization of cat. It'll be a long journey to get him functioning in the virtual world, but I'll start by sketching up the first draft of cat's future vessel. So I'm thinking we keep the lines pretty thick. He's gotta stay visible, even from pretty far away. Let's get the nose in here. Nice mouth. This. And up to his stubbed tail. Still don't know how that happened. Great. We'll give him some other frames so that he will have a little movement at least. I personally like this one the best. That'll be the main image. Now we just gotta do some very intense coding and BAM! Here's the first draft of our pet. He can eat, play, and all sorts of stuff. We got an immortal pet! But this isn't enough to transfer Cat over just yet. Pets was a pretty decent success, selling $8 million just in 1997. But the Pets games had one fatal flaw that allowed the upbringing of the Tamagotchi. Anytime I take my new friend for a walk, he falls asleep. Yeah, I love caring about this pile of ones and zeros, but all the real dogs can move and get around. And that's when the Tamagotchi moved and got around. <laughs> this virtual pet resembled the size and shape of an egg, giving it the name Tamagotchi, or Egg Watch. And it was an instant hit. It sold 83 million units as of 2021, beating the amount of dogs in the US right now, using that immortal perk. <laughs> it was insanely easy to fit in your pocket, and it even came with a chain so you could feel even more connected to your Tamagotchi. Now you can scold your pet on the go. Yeah, these virtual pets try to give you an authentic pet experience, even the negative parts. Sure, you can feed, play, and put the Tamagotchi to bed, but none of that would have any reward without the illness, the bathroom breaks, along with the happiness and attention meters. That's what got these guys so popular. They would have gotten nowhere without the taking care of your pet part of it. Huh. So let's transfer our friend here into a dedicated body. What better than an old cell phone? <laughs> Crazy easy to transport compared to a computer, and especially easier than this fella. If I just put it on a smartphone, it would feel so lifeless, just like another app. But look at all these dedicated buttons for doing pet-related tasks. Wire transfer it over to the phone, and bam, our own pocket-sized pal. I went with flip phone color for this guy. And color has played a big part in all of this. Tamagotchi was made to be very cute and girl colors. Leading Bandai to make the first Digimon in 1997. While Tamagotchi had the more feminine traits of taking care of something passively, Digimon had a more aggressive focus with the battle and training aspects. Other than that, they were very similar and virtual pets were on the rise. 
Even if these guys were just part of a little computer, it didn't stop people from having a real connection. Just look at him. People had put their life and soul into these pets, putting real care into them. In the same way you can be proud of a big project or commitment, this gave a small sense of purpose to whoever the owner was. Along with this, these were extremely social. Kids would bring these to school all the time, showing them off like dogs at a dog park. Along with this, Tamagotchi and Digimon both eventually added a legitimate form of connection between devices. Starting with the Keitai, Kaitsu, Tamagotchi Plus, your pets could play games, give gifts, and even marry someone else's pet. On the other side of the spectrum, Digimon let you battle with other Digimon, leading to crowds of people in all sorts of public areas. These groups built up some level of rowdiness, which led parents to say it was all too violent and noisy, along with many schools banning them all together. The fad died down a little bit, but the whole virtual pet idea lived on, either prioritizing the digital or physical side of things. Physically, virtual pets morphed into robotic pets, such as the famous Furby, which maybe I should consider for this guy. I'll get back to that later. And by digital, I mean a reversion into its roots in pets, being much more focused on software rather than the hardware that it's used on. And one of the most famous forms of this was and is Pokemon. I'm sure you are all aware, Pokemon has you catching animals and training them by your side. You give them items, heal them up, overall give them care, which as we've established is kind of the whole point of this virtual pet thing. That being said, it doesn't have any physical side to it. It was usually on a handheld s- I'll grab my DS. <gasps> no. It was usually on a handheld system, but you could play it on the computer and have the same effect. But seriously, no one really considers Pokemon virtual pets. If you search it up, it just gives you an actual Pokemon virtual pet. But this is very inconsistent because pets was only on the computer, meaning Pokemon is more portable than the original virtual pet. The line for virtual pet gets really vague here. It's getting even harder to know if you should care about these pets when they're just part of a bigger system that's not really about them. And I think that's the bingo. While Pokemon is literally titled after the pet, the game is about traveling across the land, teaching Pokemon the power that's inside. There's a lot more to the games than the actual care aspect. Whereas Tomagachi, pets, and this little guy, it's only about caring for your pet, nothing else. So I think there are still games that apply here, like Nintendogs and all the spin-off titles. You're just taking care of dogs, that's it. <laughs> you can be connected to Pokemon, but when all of your time is going towards taking care of this one thing, it means a bit more. It forms a special bond where I think you can consider them pets. But even then, when the interactions are simply screens and buttons, maybe we need a physical element to truly bring them to life. So I think our friend here definitely counts as a virtual pet. He's got a dedicated physical body that I can take anywhere I want. But for me to really transfer Cat into this, I gotta go past the whole virtual concept. So I'll see you next time where I figure out a body for this little fella. So learning, am I right? There's basically infinite things to learn about in the world. I've personally had my own journey of learning with video production and music creation. I've grown my skills and my brain over the years, but sometimes it's really hard to find the best sources of knowledge for these things. But here I've got you a whole world of knowledge. Wondrium is basically the best source of raw knowledge that you can get your hands on. Oh, you wanna play guitar? Bam. Oh, you wanna be a wizard? Bam. Oh, you wanna know about the mysteries and misconceptions about the real ancient Egypt? BAM! <laughs> Tons of stuff you've wondered about will not only have content here, but Wondrium is where you get the good stuff. Your brain is gonna love this place. You know, I have this whole bird from Egypt thing going, but I didn't really understand what it meant before. In the Did You Know series, they said hieroglyphs were used phonetically and ideographically, meaning sounds and symbols. So for this little guy, it sounds like W. Not only this, but their library grows every single month, meaning you'll never run out of things to learn about. With the new year, everyone is setting new goals, trying to better themselves, and what better way to better yourself than learning? Check out Wondrium on your phone, TV, laptop. Wondrium is hitting up all of you watching with a free trial to this awesome knowledge source. Click on the link in the description to start your free trial today. Thanks to Wondrium for sponsoring today's video. Subscribe.